Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel if you are new and welcome back if you're already a subscriber. Um, today's video is going to be a project life with me and we are going to be doing a project life with me Christmas present. So this is actually from a few days ago. This was what I got up to on Yule. Um, and I think that I really enjoy that I chose this as my topic because it was actually Yule that I first celebrated in terms of with intention as a Sabbath. Um, I've always kind of done witchy things. Um, and um, I've said this before, but one of the first introductions that I had to Sabbaths was getting a Yule workbook as a free digital download from Ritual Planner during a Black Friday sale. So I actually started kind of playing around with Sabbaths at Yule last year and it felt really kind of completist. It felt very, um, comforting to be all the way back at Yule again and also that this was my last box of the year with Ritual Planner and that I kind of already had done this before. It felt like something very easy to slip into. I kind of knew some things I wanted to cook um, from last year so it felt really really comforting and I did actually spend the day at home um, celebrating. I really try my best to not throw a tantrum if I have to work on a Sabbath. Um, I am fully aware that um, I could celebrate it on a weekend before or after, and I know many do, but um, I definitely think that while I'm an eclectic witch, I do tend to lean more towards kitchen witchcraft more than any other thing um, because that has just been such a massive part of my life um, and is still such a massive part of my life. And that is definitely a major love language with me in a way that I show love. Um, so it feels really good for me to be able to be home and cook a majority of the day. Um, so as you can see, we this is actually um, going to be spread one of two. So I managed to get two spreads out of the day. So let's talk about product on this page first and foremost. So that top four by six card is going to be from a six by eight paper pad. I believe it was the Mary and Bright collection from Crate Paper. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, I will go ahead and tell you now I'm a major Crate Paper Maggie Holmes fan. So a lot of product will often come from there. Um, I did go down quite a massive Massive digital rabbit hole last year. So I have tons and tons and tons of printables um, between that and the Project Life cards that I racked up back in the day. I don't know that I will ever, ever, ever need to buy another thing again, but unfortunately I probably still will. The next card is the Caffeinate Me Please card. It is from a paper person's kit. I cannot remember the name of it. Um, really, I just went through a ton of my principles. For some things I did know in my mind, um, usually like if it's a special occasion like you know, Yule where I know, or Christmas when I know I'm going to make a fancy coffee or maybe even um, any Sabbath, I usually try to switch up my morning um, beverage a little bit. I might switch it for a tea or a fun coffee that has correspondences. So I definitely wanted to make sure I included that. Um, the at home card is from a Paisley Press Principal Kit. You can find those over at Leap. What is it called? Is it, it's, it's not Leap Pad. Is it Leap Pad? Mm, I'll get back to you on that. I why can't I remember? But it's a website that has a ton of like different artists and printables. Um, I know I've got it in another video. And if I remember during this one, um, but I'm just having a brain fart and can't remember. Um, but I've used it for several different printable companies, brands, and creators. And I love it over there. It's so great. Um, the plaid type of card is from a paper person kit around the holidays. Um, that I just had printed it in my stash. The recipe card is actually new to me. Um, I picked them up whenever I was at Hobby Lobby to get my 12 by 12 scrapbook 
album for 2024. Um, and I really just like the look of them. They were just very modern and I feel like they would go with a lot of my Project Life cards. So um, I'm going to use that to document the soup recipe since that was new and something that um, I am one of those people that definitely saves tons of recipes to my Instagram saved. And then whenever I get stumped, I just go there and I scroll until I find something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's right. I wanted to make that soup cool, we'll make that. And this one actually worked out really well as far as, as, far as correspondences go, a lot of the herbs. Um, and then obviously, you know, Yule is kind of a time for using comfy food recipes. You definitely want soups and stews. Th- you know, harvest is over. You're trying to go ahead and start stretching meals because spring, we are literally at the shortest day, the longest night, this is it. Like we're turning the corner and we're heading towards spring, but you definitely wanted to make recipes that would stretch farther and longer. Um, you're also being resourceful. So what I really liked about this particular recipe is that, um, so it was a chicken and wild rice soup with mushrooms. So on the recipe card, you'll see at the very end, um, that I use the front to list out all of the ingredients and then I end up using the back as the actual directions. And you won't see the back when I flip at the very end because it's super boring and it's just words. Um, But just to clarify, this recipe could have very easily fed 10 people. Um, It was quite a bit of soup. Um, And what I loved is I actually added the chicken. The recipe didn't call for that, but I thought that that was such a great way to like stretch it even farther and put another or put a protein in there. Um, But between the rice, the mushrooms being a more resourceful item as well, um, obviously a root vegetable, there was sage in it and thyme in it. Um, what else? There was some red pepper. So we're bringing in that heat and that fire energy um, and just kind of bringing a little bit of light and fire into this very dark, cold time of the year. Again, it's a warm, comfy, hearty meal. Um, so I'll use the recipe card to document that. And then movie time. So I'm using a movie time card from Ellie Studios. So I'm really bringing out all the cards from all over the place. Um, Um, I definitely have been enjoying shopping my stash lately um, and finding all kinds of treasures because, again, I put down Project Life for about a year to just kind of process some things that um, I needed to and be ready to come back to documenting in this way. Um, And I also, I know I've spoken about this before, I really did hit a roadblock with documentation through things that had nothing to do with me but indirectly because obviously I document um, other people's memories as well as my own and it just felt uncomfortable and it felt um, insensitive to continue to document at the time. Um, It's something I definitely want to go back and fill in and definitely feel comfortable doing now. Um, But yes, I will deal with that separately. And I think I'm going to do something like a throwback Thursday type of video every once in a while. Um, If I hit a period where I I can film some backdated stuff and I or maybe like a flashback Friday or maybe we can do some live streams. Let me know what your thoughts are on doing either like a throwback Thursday or a flashback Friday kind of live stream style for... um, maybe a month like we can maybe do that or maybe do like every other week it's just a thought but I think that would be really really fun to bring like your older scrapbook layouts that maybe you didn't complete for whatever reason um and you feel comfortable with diving back into now because I am definitely an advocate for getting through those layouts but in your own time sometimes it's better to get them out of the way and sometimes you just need to sit on them and let them percolate and you need to process them because at its core we are processing our lives and we are documenting our lives so whether that's in journaling or whether that's in scrapbooking I think it's really important to do it when you feel like the best time to do it is so let's talk about what's going on on the page and oh we'll talk about a couple other products so I you will see me pop these little word phrases about. So really all of my sticker word phrases come from all over the place. Um, 
all different brands. I really, you know, I can say that some of my favorites have been Studio Calico and I really do like Citrus Twist sheets as well. Um, I've often picked them up in places. I definitely think that there was like a a time when you could find them a lot easier than you can now. So I do hold them near and dear. But I did think the other day that I could kind of create my own if I ever find myself struggling to find them or to find ones that fit. And that's really just typing them out on Word and printing it on sticker paper and you can cut it out yourself and voila, you have your own Word phrase stickers. So that's a little pro tip for you. Um, but I grabbed out my Dymo label maker just to add like a little element of texture to type out some word phrases for each page. So for this one, I did Yule, breakfast, and lunch. Um, and I think it looks really nicely on the page and again, creates that texture, but it also keeps the page really even and it doesn't distract. It's a really nice, simple embellishment without me having to do like a whole lot of journaling. So let's just start at the top and we'll talk about what all's happening on the spread and I'll point out any additional product that I might have forgotten along the way. So that first card is just a title card with... Um, a cute little label and I know the lighting is literally right on top of that so you can't really see but it says this December so I think it's just a really nice pretty title card a place for your eyeballs to rest for a moment before we like get way into it so then I use the coffee card to talk a little bit about the coffee I chose to have which was a white chocolate peppermint mocha so this is what I do I use a peppermint mocha K cup and then I use the white chocolate creamer um that is my perfect match and it works flawlessly for me I would like to try to make like kind of a boozy version of that but I haven't yet um I think my thought process has been to use a mocha Starbucks K cup some peppermint vodka maybe and maybe the white chocolate but I'm worried that it might overpower and be too much mocha so I'm not really sure yet haven't tried that yet if you have tried a boozy version pop it down in the comments below I am here for all the boozy coffee um I do use a stamp set from Allie Edwards to stamp in seriously let's do this into the coffee mug and I absolutely love how that looks another thought that I have had since completing the spread is going back and coloring in the um the sleeve of the cup I think that would be really really cute um I could either do red because it would it's kind of you know Christmas season obviously or I could do just like a traditional brown and I think that would add like a nice little pop to that page um moving forward definitely something I want to try out if I don't do it this round um but I think it would be really cool to just have that little pop of color in that black and white card Next, you'll see a picture where I am clearly wrapping presents and drinking coffee. Um, I started off with wrapping Owen's presents and then just proceeded to wrap the rest of them. Um, I'm actually wrapping the last present today. It finally arrived from Amazon. Um, it doesn't really even need to be wrapped. Jeff already knows what it is. Um, but nonetheless, wrapping, it, I was very surprised by how little I needed to wrap this year, just in general. Christmas is a lot smaller this year than it has been in previous years. And I also um, am gifting some baked goods this year. So those will have to get wrapped up. But in general, like I kept it really minimalistic this year and I'm really quite proud of that. Um, I know it can be really, really difficult in a season that is thrust us into giving to excess and purchasing to excess. But it felt really great that I'm giving some baked goods this year. Um, and they're simple. And I really feel like most of the people I gift to like, uh, they're already really hard to shop for and they have plenty of stuff um, and I either contribute to bigger items that they want or try to give them a consumable. Um, I'm really big on gifting consumables. So then we'll get into my breakfast which happened to be a pumpkin spice protein shake from Koya and I can honestly say it was really good um I've done I've gone down quite a pumpkin spice rabbit hole this year um and I'm not really upset about it um I don't know that I'll get another one before they're all gone for the season because I do have some smoothie cubes 
that are from Live Pure that are also pumpkin spice that I haven't gotten through yet. So I'll be pumpkin spicing it up for a little while. Um, but in the background, what I thought was really cool, how I took that picture, I really wanted to find a way to document what I was eating for breakfast and what I was doing in the background, which was making the soup. Um, and this was perfect to like hold it over the cutting boards so that in the background you could see like I was in a chop fest The next thing is I made a quick to-do list because even though I was at home and um, celebrating Yule and winter solstice and all that jazz, um, I was also working and it was my last day before we left for the holiday break and I did have quite a bit to do that I needed to power through because it had been quite a week um, and I had had to move a lot of things to the last day and it felt really good because I really did smash through everything and get it done and I was really 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 happy with how I left work. Um, I don't feel anxious. I don't feel like I'm going to come back and it's all going to tumble on my head. So I'm really happy that I can actually enjoy the festive season and not be like a Sunday scary mode all through it. Um, So I just kind of do a quick checklist. I do use a stamp from Allie Edwards. Um, Actually, no, that's not from Allie Edwards. That stamp set came from Studio Calico. Um, And then I use the Ellie Studios little dots in gold to because I did want to incorporate gold into this spread I definitely don't incorporate metallics near enough and the holiday season is a great time to get them out so I decided to use the gold dots to as my like kind of check boxes um which was really nice and then some are work related and some are personal so that was just kind of a nice little checklist to have um the next is a finished um product. (laughs) It is the soup that I was working on. And I did end up putting a little word phrase sticker that says spicy, period. That soup was not supposed to be spicy. And I did get a little heavy handed with the red pepper flakes. And I thought that was really comical because a lot of the soups that I tend to make and stews for that matter are spicy. And for the first time I was like, cool, I'm going to make a normal soup absolutely not. It still turned out spicy. Um, but I just thought that was funny. Thankfully, Jeff still liked it. Um, I do think that I did a oops. And that's the fact that I didn't separate out my soup and then add the cream. So pro tip is that if you would like to freeze soups that can be creamy, you want to hold back on the cream. Now, I say that, but I have added or I have frozen chicken tortilla soup and it's been just fine. Um, I think that I'm still going to cross my fingers and hope that the soup comes out of the freezer fine. And I just may take the reheating a lot slower to see what happens. But I will let you know how that goes. Um, It could completely be a bust. Um... Thankfully, I do have backup plans usually if I'm going to attempt something like that. But fingers crossed that I don't have a big blow up or anything. And um, yeah, because I froze like five containers, um, single serve containers. Freezing soups and chilies has been like a trend for months now and definitely a lifesaver. Um, so the next card, I went ahead and used a stamp set from Allie Edwards December kit. I don't know if it was last year or the year before that. Um, I think it was from the year before. Um, and it just says celebrate and give thanks because at its core, Yule is kind of like the pre Christmas era. So this is before Christmas became Christmas. So back in the day when there were not 365 days of the year, winter solstice, and the 12 days um, of Yule became kind of like a Christmas time, a time for thanks and giving and presents. And it was all the same correspondences that we love to associate with Christmas now, wreaths and candles and fire and all the same foods and, well, maybe not all the same foods, but um basically it's the same is is what I'm trying to break down um 
So I really liked that I just had a very simple card there, a place for my eyeballs to rest. You're going to see me fuss with doodly bits or sprinkle bits or whatever you want to call them, enamel dots um, of all shapes and sizes. I really did want to mix things up a little bit. So I have hearts and stars and enamel dots um, and I'm really, and asterisks. Um, I'm really happy with how the sprinkly bits turned out and I got to smash a couple things out of my stash. Always a fave. Um, the recipe card is really simple. I didn't overcomplicate it. I just filled it out. Again, I did that off camera. Specific, other than putting the cute little hearts and the staples on it, I left it really blank because I really wanted to make sure that I filled it out correctly. And I also had the recipe on my phone. Um, the next card is this Buddy Snow Globe Donut in front of my TV and my tree held up ever so perfectly um, so that I could document um, that I was going to watch Elf and eat my Elf donut from Krispy Kreme. Um, and then I use a couple word phrase stickers to pop in smile real big. I was very upset because I later found a sticker on an Allie Edwards sheet that said smiling is my favorite. It really like didn't work with the spread color wise, but obviously it would have fit better. Um, and then I used the movie time card to discuss Elf and obviously that I was eating the donut elf apparently turned 20 years this year and that blew my mind a little bit um I don't necessarily remember watching it a ton um back in the day like when it first came out I mean obviously I'd seen it but I don't think I really got into it until I got a little bit older um because I probably I would have been like 12 at the time. So I don't know that that was really my aesthetic at 12. Um, I'm sure I saw it, but I'm sure I, it, a lot was lost on me or I was just not into it. Um, some things that I did forget to do on that spread were actually rate the movie, which I would definitely give it a five. I love Elf. It's adorable. Um, and I do want to say that I was incredibly disappointed. Um, the Krispy Kreme near me is just not the best. I knew that going in and I was just really, really disappointed. Um, the donut really wasn't that great, but that was also not the donut I wanted. I wanted the Buddy's Breakfast Donut. And I actually went into the shop to physically look at them because I was a little skeptical that it wasn't going to look like what it looks like on the promos. So on the promos, it literally looks like Buddy's Breakfast that he makes where it's got, you know, like this giant spaghetti mound um, of cake batter frosting is what flavor it was, which is my favorite. And then um, it had like the M&M sprinkled on it. It had the whole thing. It looked exactly like it on top of a donut. And I went in and you guys, it was the saddest looking donut I'd ever seen. Like the, whoever decorated them, it looked terrible. It was literally like a squiggle. One, it looked like one noodle was draped across this thing and a couple M&Ms. It was awful. And I would have never paid for that. So I'm glad I went in to look at them before I chose to pay for it. I chose to get this one just so that I would have something. Um, and it really wasn't that impressive. Um, but that was disappointing. Thankfully, the very next day I was going to Ponce to pick up the really fancy Christmas donuts for me and my mom. So I had donut redemption and I have since eaten half of a sugar cookie donut from Five Daughters. And if you are in Tennessee or in Georgia and you can get to one, run, do not walk and treat yourself to two. They are heavenly. It is literally one of my favorite donuts of the whole year. It's the sweetest donut that I ever consume from them, but by God, it's the best to the point that there's one in the box and I went ahead and bought an extra one so that I didn't have to like break into it without my mom and I didn't have to share it. It's like, and their sugar cookies are bomb as well. Here is your PSA to go get five daughters donuts which I will talk about until I'm blue in the face. This is the second spread. So going through product, and I think the best way to do this is to just kind of like go in order so it's not manic, like I feel like the first round was. So this first card is from Studio Calico. It was a printable. Um, the gratitude card is as well. 
Um, and I believe they're both possibly from the same collection. So the cozy card, I actually do like a dash border just to add some depth to it. And I love a good dash border. So that made me super happy. Um, and then I use my Dymo again to do some word phrases. So on this page, it's going to be vibes, dinner, and in bed. Um, I end up adding a word phrase sticker to the bottom of vibes that says more of this because it really was a cozy day. Um, I am kicking myself that I didn't use any stickers that said PJs all day because I know I have some and it really was PJs all day and it was heavenly, absolutely heavenly. Um, I took a shower in the morning and I stayed in my pajamas all day and it was great. Um, even through working the whole thing. Um, I'm also going to do kind of like a sprinkle cluster in the top corner right above that O, um, not corner per se, but right above the O in a little while. And as far as this page goes, sprinkles that I'm going to use are enamel dots from my stash. Um, the hearts are from, of course, Maggie Holmes. And, um, actually they're from Jen Hatfield. I take that back an older collection that I have from her. And then I use some asterisks from Ellie studios that have just like those softer, more like Mm, cottagey autumnal hue to them and I love them the next picture is Banks being Banks at her finest which is her sticking out of this blanket looking so over everything and so exhausted and just oh she's had a hard day so I used a word phrase sticker that needed to get out of my stash but fit the photo perfectly which I know we all love that moment and it just says wake me when it's all over because <laughs> we always kind of joke that I am quite a lot pretty much from October to the end of the year um and really I don't quite slow down um, until after my birthday. So it's like a full six month haul, I would say, because I am usually in, I would even say it starts in September, unfortunately, because I'm really jazzed about fall weather and hiking. Then we get into Halloween and then Thanksgiving and more hiking. December is Christmas vibes. January is planner vibes. February, I want hearts everywhere. Um, I don't really buy into the commercialism of February and Valentine's, but I do a hundred percent buy into pink being everywhere and I can get behind that. Then March is my birthday and then April I am completely exhausted and ready to hibernate. So that's usually how it goes. But I just thought that fit perfectly and she just looks so cute and I got down really 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 low to snap this picture of her just looking utterly exhausted. The next card I used as a, just a space for gratitude, because again, this is that season. This is that season to take a pause and be thankful for the abundance that we have. Even if we want more or don't feel like we have it all, I think taking that pause and being so grateful. Um, I definitely know that this has been a rough year for me on many, many fronts, and I sometimes have a tendency to get way into my head about all the things that I don't have and all the things I do want. And I feel like that's an easy rabbit hole to go down, especially in this world that we live in where Instagram just perpetuates, you know, that you are not enough. So I think that it's really important to take the pause. Um, and again, this is also why, even though there are certain brands that I would love to have a subscription with next year, I know I have plenty of things and I would like to see, it sounds so simple to be like, oh, it's $20 a month to get that kit. Okay, let's do some quick math. And so that's $120. And that's not necessarily counting shipping. So I think that's $120. I feel like that's wrong. No, that's definitely wrong. I'll have to do that math later. It's like 200 and something. Regardless, um, <laughs> now that I have figured out that clearly I'm doing math very poorly. Yeah, it's like two, let's just say 250 bucks to call it a day. Um, Basically, that's $250 that you could spend somewhere else on something else, paying something off. And yes, while $20 could also bring you a butt ton of happiness, like, do you really need that, like, kind of mentality? So I'm really challenging myself not to shop um, other than 
replenishment supplies when it comes to this next scrapbooking year. Um, the next card, oh, I did end up stamping thankful for all of this, which is from a Allie Edwards November stamp set, I'm sure, from a previous year. Um, then I use a holiday cheer kind of drink fill out card from Paper Person to document that I have been obsessed with all the Trader Joe's goodies this year. Um, so I did get the Trader Joe's wine base liqueur eggnog whatever it is it's not liqueur because I'm in Georgia and there's like the whole thing about liquor something or another I'm not really sure um I need to I don't really care I just know I can't get it um <laughs> and then I did buy the wassail wassail punch however you say it. Um, and then I found out that I could add red wine, especially a cab. And I happened to have an open cab in the fridge. So I went ahead and threw that in there. Um, so that was really nice. And I liked both of them. The eggnog is hella strong. Um, the wassail punch was good. If you mix it appropriately, like a one-to-one, -one, I think it balances really well. Um, so I just documented that a little bit. I did, there's a prompt on there that says, um, treating or something like that you would like to treat yourself to and I put sugar plum fairy cocktail that's definitely going on the try next year list because this season is gone but it looks so pretty um and it uses a plum liqueur and you can put edible glitter in it and I'm so here for all that so stay tuned for next year and see if we manage to pull that off but I'm totally doing that um, the next card is documenting dinner, which was a pork chop with an apple butter and sage sauce, sweet potato gnocchi with brown butter and sage sauce, and green beans. So good. So the pork chops and the gnocchi came from Trader Joe's. So the pork chops were raw and Jeff actually pan seared them and then made the sauce. So he actually helped. Um, sage is a big correspondence for Yule. So that was lovely. And again, you're, you're talking about root vegetables. So using the sweet potato gnocchi was a perfect um, side. I actually did an apple butter and sage pork chop a little bit differently, um, but did do the sweet potato gnocchi for you last year. So this was like a return. Again, this was like bringing back something that felt comfortable. And normally I don't like to repeat recipes too, too much for the Sabbaths or for um, like recurring Sabbaths now. Um, but again, this one, this kind of felt like a bit of a homecoming, a full turn around the sun, the full wheel, wheel of the year. Um for me with celebrating Sabbath. So it felt really nice um, to bring back some favorites. Um, so the let's eat card kind of breaks down, you know, exactly what I just said, <laughs> what we were eating. And I rated it four stars only because while it, I don't know, maybe I'll go back and color it in because it definitely was good enough to make twice. And that sauce was heavenly. So bad on me for not giving it five stars in the moment. So I'll go back and fix that. Um, <laughs> And then I just wanted a really nice place to rest my eyes. So I cut out a three by four card from the snowflake, the crepe paper snowflake collection, and then did a label from Studio Calico printables and then just stamped yummy on top of that just to make it a super simple, clean card. You'll also see that I staple on a couple pages and I just use my tiny um, attacher from Tim Holtz to pop those in. And I am a texture person. I really like that there's paper and that there's ink and that there's stamping and that there's sprinkles and that there's raised areas and I love the Dymo labels. I love it all, but I definitely think you can make a very simple texture card. And I feel like this is a great representation of that with the paper, the label, the stamp, and a staple, and you're good to go. Um, the bottom row is a picture of my tarot spread. You will not see me fill out that card that has the labels, the red labels. Um, I don't do anything. You'll see it at the end when it's all filled out here in a minute. Um, but what I did was I put in the questions. Um, I probably should go back and like label like which card, like what the questions are in order, but the cards are in a different order. Like it goes um, left to right, up and then down. So that's different. Um, and I use the uh, the Muses deck. 
why can't I remember who makes that right now? Because I have the Lightseers deck as well, and my brain just went blank. But I do have both. Um, and that's what I'll use that label card for. The label card is a printable from Studio Calico. Next are a picture of the delicious cookies that I made. Um, and again, I used a Dymo label there, and you saw me stamp on there. Uh, I used a Citrus Twist stamp that said sweet treats and then now I'm making a little sprinkle cluster. I always feel like my sprinkle clusters take me the absolute longest because my OCD cannot handle it. Like it has to look perfectly imperfect and I usually try to make like a triangle of sorts or do threes every once in a while like in that top corner for the cozy card I did four and I really love how that turned out but it doesn't always work out like that um so I was really happy. Um, and then the last and final card is from Studio Calico. It is from one of the holiday sets that they've done. And it was perfect. It said holiday baking, but it also said fresh from the oven. You cannot beat that perfection. Because at the end of all this, I had at least enough forethought to go ahead and ask Jeff, hey, do you want me to make semi-homemade cookies? To me, semi-homemade cookies are, we're going to make Betty Crocker mix cookies, but I'm going to get creative with them, um, i.e. do a couple mix-ins. So that's what I did with this. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I do have trouble finding just plain oatmeal mix throughout the year. So I might need to like go to Target and pick up a couple extra bags. Um, yes, I could always just make them. And that would be probably the most efficient and probably a lot healthier. But I digress. Um, so I did a bagged Betty Crocker oatmeal cookie mix. And then I added in some dried cranberries, which are a correspondence of Yule. And then I also added in some white chocolate chips, which are just delicious. Um, I only... <laughs> He thought this was rather comical, and let me know if you guys do this as well. Often, if I have an incident like that where it's like, cool, I'm going to make these for other people, but I also want to make them for us, and I want us to have fresh options, I go ahead and I made us exactly four cookies, um, two for each of us, and then I put the rest of the dough in a Tupperware in the fridge. And I definitely think I'm going to add some pecans to it because I think pecans would give it a little extra crunch. Um, um, I would also love to do an oatmeal chocolate chip toffee cookie. That would make me so happy. I love oatmeal cookies, but I love toffee. So I think that's in the works too. Ooh, and maybe like an espresso bean or something in there. My thoughts, all my thoughts. I love cookie creations and mixing all kinds of stuff together. Um, but like I said, that is a picture of that and an explanation of that. So now we're going to do the really slow flip and I'm going to take a moment to say how grateful and thankful I am to you guys. Without your support, this channel would not exist. I cannot wait to see what we get up to in 2024. We've only got a couple videos left in the year and obviously we have our live stream on Wednesday that I am looking forward to. We're going to be doing a January plan with me. So I hope to see you guys there. Um, otherwise, Merry Christmas and I'll see you guys soon.